I consider the Federal Reserve Act and the creation of the Federal Reserve as being unconstitutional. It gave uh, the government then uh, the power to create legal tender out of thin air, that is to create paper money, and although they didn't do that overnight, between 1913 and 1971, that is exactly what happened. But the notion of a central bank uh, does not uh, fit into the Constitution. Uh, the Congress has the authority to coin money, and only gold and silver should be legal tender. And uh, this is an absolute contradiction of the Constitution to have a Federal Reserve system and a central bank. Not a lot of American people understand it, and I would add that probably not too many people here in the Congress understand it either. I think they see it as a convenience, and I think a lot of other people see it as a convenience because they think they're protected by the type of system that we have. But a fiat monetary system or a paper money system is merely a system where the government has this power and authority to dictate and insist that a piece of paper is legal tender. And even members of the banking committee have come up to me and they say, you mean our dollar isn't backed by gold anymore? Uh, not realizing that the Federal Reserve really accommodates big government uh, bureaucrats and politicians. When you think about the significance of the Federal Reserve Act being passed under those conditions, the American people didn't know, but it was banking interests that were behind it. Powerful banking interests because they wanted their assets protected. They wanted the Federal Reserve to be the lender of last resort. So if they had been loaning out and risking the money, and these loans go bad instead of having the market take care of this, they wanted bailed out. And this is why it was a tremendous popular thing to do for the banks and, of course, the big business people who were borrowing the money. So it was very, very special interest directed, and it, it was designed for the elite. And even today, a lot of people don't quite understand that. So it's an educational job as well outside of Washington, but hopefully someday people here in Washington, especially the members of the banking committee, will gain some interest in this subject because ultimately we will have to address it. The inflation isn't rising prices. The inflation is the government's program of increasing the supply of money, which devalues the currency, and that causes the prices to go up. Inflation, that is the destruction of money, eventually wipes out the middle class. The best example in the 20th century being uh, what we saw uh, happen in Germany. As the runaway inflation came, the middle class got wiped out. In the early stages, of course, somebody benefited. Uh, eventually it hurts everybody. But in this country right now, we have constant uh, insidious inflation. So there is a transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to the wealthy. But because it affects the business cycle and causes prices to go up in general, who suffers the most? The people who can afford it the least, that people on fixed incomes, low middle income people, poor people. I think it especially hits hard low middle income people who are trying to make it on their own and won't go on the dole because their prices go up more and they're the first ones to lose their job when the business cycle turns down. The Federal Reserve, by increasing the credit, creates the boom part of the cycle, but then there's always the resulting downturn of the cycle when unemployment rises. Well, that's, it's hard to predict, but I, I certainly think it's possible because I think the financial bubble worldwide is something that uh, we have never experienced before. Uh, we've had tastes of that. But Alan Greenspan, in one way, is a genius, and in another way, he is an unbelievable threat to us. He's a, a genius in the sense that in, in, in a technical fashion, he's been able to keep this system of inflation together longer than anybody else has been able to, especially in this last go-around from 2000 on. With the collapse of the NASDAQ bubble, we really didn't have much of a recession because he immediately uh, started inflating massively, taking interest rates down to 1%. And now, of course, he's a little bit frightened about the bubble, and he's curtailing credit to some degree. But uh, the dollar has become the gold of the world. The, uh, the uh, world central banks have accepted the dollar as if it were gold. Greenspan claims that they have gotten the paper money to act as if it is gold, which I strongly disagree with, and all the hard money people disagree uh, with. But uh, I believe he's been capable of creating this huge financial bubble, and the world has not yet uh, seen what may come of this. So I suspect that uh, depending on when it comes and what we do, it could very well end up into a much worse situation than the Great Depression. But if the country decided, well, something has to be done, and we went to a gold standard and limited the creation of credit, curtailed the power of the Fed, I think it would iron out all our difficulties when Argentina periodically would just quit inflating. 
and maybe tie their currency to the, even the dollar. Price inflation went like from hundreds of percent per year down to 2% or 3%. So it's, it's rather rapid. So you would see an immediate benefit. You would iron out the severe swings in the business cycle. Uh, the price problems would be diminished. But one thing we'd have to give up, which to me would be a benefit, government would have to curtail spending because they can't tax the people enough to pay for all those bills. So we would have to curtail our spending. So that would be, to me, a tremendous boost to the American people and to the economy. At the same time, we gave sound money. I mean, this would be fantastic. Within months, uh, there would be some people who would suffer from the adjustment period, but it might be the people who have benefited so much over these years. But the average person, the poor person, the jobs would become available. So it, it would not take a long, long time. What would take a long time is if we refuse to consider it and the problems get worse and we have a severe recession or depression and huge inflation and we do all the wrong things. That is what we should work so hard against. People realize that the government's creating this money out of thin air, and you use the term loosely, printing, because they actually create credit, uh, which is uh, essentially the same as printing money. Uh, most people realize, well, how can they do that? And most people know that counterfeiting is, is wrong and immoral and illegal. Well, here we have a system of money where we have permitted the politician in collusion with the central bankers to create unlimited amounts of money. Some weeks they create $30 billion in one week to accommodate this system. And uh, Murray Rothbard in particular argued for the case for 100% uh, gold coin standard, emphasizing the coinage of gold, which doesn't, a lot of people think, what well, does that mean, that to go to the store you have to carry heavy coins? No, but 100% gold coin standard means that if you carry certificates, they have to be 100% redeemable uh, in gold. And this is what holds the government in check. If government tends to cheat and start printing too many certificates, then the people hold the government in check by turning in their certificate and say, we don't trust you, we want the gold. This is what happened in the 30s. And it's exactly what, what happened was that the government was called on it, and then what did the government do? They made the holding of gold illegal because it embarrassed the government, and they did it precisely to make government large. The Federal Reserve System introduced this notion that banks had to only hold a fraction of reserves in order to create credit. So that is another way uh, where the government uh, debases the currency. Not only do they print the money and create the credit, as it goes through the banking system, uh, through fractional reserve banking, we further expand the supply of money, diluting the value of money, which is the inflation. Uh, the inflation isn't rising prices. The inflation is the government's program of increasing the supply of money, which devalues the currency, and that causes the prices to go up. There's a lot of examples where you have runaway inflation, prices are soaring, and the economy is in shambles. And that is what I fear will come to this country if we don't quit printing the money and creating credit, whether it's, it's to fight wars that we shouldn't be fighting or to bail everybody out in this country uh, that needs something. And that's the way this place operates. They sort of like it. You know, they like it because, you know, I don't have to raise taxes and somehow or another these bills get paid. Not understanding that when you dilute the value of money, it's really an immoral, deceitful tax on the people. But it will come to an end. If you study monetary history uh, throughout thousands of years, you will find out that paper money has been tried many, many times, and it never succeeds. It always ends badly. The question is, is when will the dollar end badly? Will it be next year or five years or ten years? I'm convinced it will end.